Welcome to our daily rosary meditation. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's call to mind all those we've promised to pray for. Now that may seem like a trite little introduction, but honestly, I have countless people who ask me every day to pray for things, and it can be overwhelming. St. Bernadette, to whom Mary appeared at Lourdes, she used to get 10,000 letters a day. I feel so much better now. I should, I should try harder. She felt so overwhelmed by the prayer intentions, but Our Lady came to her and said to her, Bernadette, I know the needs of all those people. So you just offer your rosary for all those you've promised to pray for. So that's why we begin our rosary in this way. So when someone says to you or shares a difficulty with you and you say, I will pray for you, do this actually. Look up to heaven <laughs> and say, Mother of God, I commit to pray for, and then name that person mm -hmm. right then in my yeah. rosary. That's really good. I also, just today, I was on a phone call with someone and I said, how can I pray for you? And they answered, how about we say a little Hail Mary together right now? And then you, you move forward, it's really good. That's beautiful. So we offer this rosary for all those we promise to pray for. The theme of our meditation today is the dark night. God created every person for holiness, for transforming union with Jesus. And God wants to give us this direct experience of himself in this life. And this is called infused contemplation. And yet, strangely enough, to get to that stage usually requires going through a period where the thought of prayer, even the thought of divine things, actually becomes distasteful. This is sometimes called the dark night of sense. But really, it's the milestone where God allows you to go beyond all the natural faculties and joy. To go beyond your human powers of thinking, feeling, and enjoying. To experience God more directly. So what are the signs of the dark night of sense? And what should you do if you or someone you know find yourself going through it? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. St. John of the Cross gives three signs that a person is entering the dark night of sense. The first is that a person suddenly finds they have a loss of interest in heavenly things, but they find they also aren't, aren't interested in earthly things either. But this makes sense. God is getting you ready to encounter him directly. So he's helping you let go of your dependence on natural ways of thinking and feeling and enjoying, which means you won't be interested in or delighted in engaging as much with natural things. So God is kind of weaning you from the things of the world so that you can experience him more fully. Secondly, you'll feel concerned at not having more enthusiasm for prayer or spiritual things. And you'll be worried that maybe you've done something wrong, that you're serving God less than you used to. And third, you just can't seem to use your imagination or your reason in prayer at all. You have no desire to read or think or figure things out in prayer. You'll find it hard to focus in thinking about some holy theme or idea, and you'll feel totally unfocused, totally distracted in prayer, your mind wandering all over the place. Again, that's because God is going to show himself to you not through your imagination or intellect as he did in discursive meditation. As John says, since the sensory part of the soul is incapable of the goods of the spirit, it remains deprived, dry and empty. But God is going to come to the soul in a more direct way. So John says, while the spirit is tasting the things of God, the flesh tastes nothing at all and becomes weak in its work. So these are the three signs you must be passing through in a dark night of the sense, which is a great gift, even if it's an uncomfortable gift at first. But there are also signs that your inability to delight or focus in prayer actually isn't a dark night. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Plenty of times people start noticing that their prayer is becoming dry, distracted. They're taking no delight in things of God or things of the world. And they say, hey, maybe I'm in the dark night, but not so fast. It may be that your lack of enjoyment of God and prayer isn't because of some mystical experience. It's just a basic fact of nature. For instance, maybe you've been sick and are really down emotionally. When our body's wiped out, our emotions are wiped out. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you healthy? Are you getting enough exercise? Are you eating well? If not, then of course your ability to delight in God or the things of the world and your ability to focus in prayer, it's going to be compromised. But St. John of the Cross also says that you have to be careful to see whether your dryness or distaste or distraction in prayer, is it coming from the fact that you haven't yet established the habit of daily mental prayer? Maybe your prayer is just sporadic. If it's sporadic, it's going to be distracted. Or maybe you have a disordered attachment to work so that you're always thinking about work when you go to prayer. Or maybe you have a disordered attachment to your kids. So you're overwhelmed with concerns about your kids or grandkids during prayer. Or maybe you've give, just given yourself over to too much distraction with news or entertainment or sports or YouTube. Or John of the Cross says, your distraction could be just simply the result of self-indulgence, sin, vice. So we shouldn't act as though God is bringing us to a higher state if our dryness is an indicator that we're just not living the way we're supposed to live. The dark night happens to those who have already to a large degree, put their lives in order, both their prayer life and their natural life. If we haven't, well, then the first thing we need to do is get those in order. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Now, again, St. John says that the reason for the authentic dark night of the soul, this dryness in our prayer, is that God is actually giving us a more direct experience of himself. But we haven't yet developed the taste for it. John says, in the beginning, the soul does not experience this spiritual savor and delight, but dryness and distaste. The reason is the novelty involved in this exchange. Since its palate is accustomed to these other sensory tastes, the soul still sets its eyes on them. It is unable to experience the spiritual savor and good until gradually prepared by means of the dark and obscure night. The soul instead experiences dryness and distaste because of a lack of the gratification it formerly enjoyed so easily. In other words, it's a delightful thing to be able to go to prayer, read something from our Lord's life or a profound meditation from a saint to dwell on it and understand it, and maybe even write down some fantastic insight and walk away with a great resolution and then share it with other people. That's what most of us should be trying to do every day. But what happens when God takes that away? It gets hard. Not being able to focus on anything in prayer, not feeling like we're getting any insights, feeling like we're not making any progress, coming up empty-handed, after every effort, but as we'll see, if we stay the course, God is actually beginning to give us something better because God is beginning to give us himself. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Once you've reached the authentic dark night, John says, now is the time to sit in unconcern and idleness. Now, it'll feel like you're not getting anything done, but that's all right, because in fact, you're not, and God is. God is starting to take over your prayer. John says, if a model for the painting or retouching of a portrait should move because of a desire to do something, the artist would be unable to finish and the work would be spoiled. This is the time to sit still. So don't try to read and generate ideas or images or feelings or even resolutions in prayer. And definitely don't turn back to a bunch of distractions. Just sit still. Try simply to attend lovingly to God and don't worry about anything more. As John says, let there be no obstacle to the operation of the infused contemplation God is bestowing so they may, may receive it with more peaceful plenitude and make room in the spirit for the enkindling and burning of the love that this dark and secret contemplation bears and communicates to the soul. Now this is my favorite line in John. For contemplation is nothing else than a peaceful and loving and secret inflow of God, which, if not hampered, will fire the soul with the spirit of love. So if God is trying to fill you with himself in a way that sets your soul on fire, by all means, don't do anything to get in his way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. St. Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us, us in battle, battle. be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Teresa, we are, you know, I think this was the 13th meditation that we've done on John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila. So we're quite a ways into this. Well, we've really flown by. And I'm really curious what your your thoughts are on these, and especially this on on the dark night. But I I want to start this conversation just by reminding people what we need to do on our part to mm. get ready for infused contemplation, infused prayer the beginning of which is the dark night. The dark night is the beginning of contemplation. Mm -hmm. But on our part, we have to be committed to the daily habit of meditation and a resolution. Not once in a while, but every day, and then persevere in that. But also to frequently receive the Eucharist and monthly confession. But also... God has to prepare our human nature to receive him. And we prepare by getting our life in order, meaning to live a good recipe of life, to live a well-ordered and balanced life. And then uh, we got to remove all the stuff that's killing us spiritually. We got to remove the distractions, uh, all the junk food of our soul, so we got to really cut down our screen time. Mm -hmm. And we even have to remove the near occasions of sin. Not only remove the sin, the stuff that's killing us, we got to get rid of the situations that lead us to that. That's the basic blocking and tackling that we have to do to get ready for infused contemplation. So uh, we got to do our part. But what are your well, what are your thoughts? What have you been reflecting on? Mm. The funny thing is, I think this is always terrible when in the first point I have some really interesting thoughts and points, but near the end I think I slid off into a side thought on obedience. <laughs> oh. Uh, but separate from the meditation, just with experience. 
Well, uh, oh. and no, no big thoughts on that. Just that I realized I come into contact with a lot of people that are not rebellious, but very rebellious when it comes to the faith. And I think that's the one place where we shouldn't be rebellious. Oh, but you've just hit. This is the <laughs> the point that I I forgot to mention hmm. because remember Teresa and John say that the the most basic thing we have to do is become humble. Mm. And to be humble means that what God teaches us through the church and through the saints, like John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila, that's reality. And we yeah. need to conform ourselves to it rather than making Hmm. that conform itself to our opinions because isn't that what we do mm -hmm. and i find this so interesting for people like us because personally i am very rebellious i there has not been a system that i have not rebelled against and usually my response to it is that well that's just not real like the education system is good and it's a it's a good system and i love teachers i'm friends with a lot of teachers and i understand their struggles but also it's not my god <laughs> it's not my religion it's not it's, it should be a system that is flexible because it's made by man and therefore it conforms to man. But I think the same people who conform fully to those systems that are man-made are, are very rebellious, rebellious when it comes to God-made systems. And that's the only place where I'm very obedient because otherwise everything else, I'm like, you, you said it so well. God, that's that's reality. All of that is set in stone and everything else is built around it. But innately, because I know that so well, I look at everything else and I'm like, oh, but why should I care? <laughs> well, uh... And there is an obedience to that. I care about the law, I must say, legally speaking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But your point is excellent. The foundation is humility. And that is the first part of humility is accepting what God established, what he created, the order. And we're shown it, obviously through Jesus, but we're shown it through Teresa and John because the church has said, here are your mm. two teachers on prayer. So just follow what they say. You know, we're going up this mountain and we have these two guides and they say, uh, if you want to get to the top, go this way. And our in our rebellious pride, we say, "Well, I don't like that way. I'm going to go a better way." And yeah. what happens? We fall off a cliff. Uh -huh. And look at it this way: you're, you're looking at yourself as the prime example. When we, from our own experiences, know that we fall very often and we get lost and we don't know where we're going, I'd rather follow someone where I'm very confident that they have consistently been on the same track, the right track for a long time. And I so deeply trust the process of canonization yeah. that I'm very confident in those people. Am I more confident in them or myself? In myself, I guess. <laughs> but it does this fundamental humility that accepts that God is God. I'm not God. Jesus continues to teach us through the church, meaning the Pope and the bishops in union with him and their official writing and the writings of the canonized saints. That's mm -hmm. tradition, mm -hmm. which is part of the word of God. So are we going to be humble enough to read, study, learn those things and then try to conform our lives to it? Or are we in our pride going to say, I don't like it. <laughs> So I don't accept it. Because that's really what we're saying. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. And because I don't like it, I don't think it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I I think this was a big turning point in... And this is a point that everyone reaches in their faith life at some point. Where, especially if you're a cradle Catholic or something like that. At some point, your faith has to become your own. For you to carry out your faith and continue. And to continue to practice. And... Usually that point in your life is also met with a lot of dissonance and questioning in a way. But I think I was lucky to, at that turning point, think a lot about, okay, this, if I'm deciding what is real <laughs> in a way and really questioning things, I can accept that dissonance and be like, okay, at the very least, 
I don't know what I believe right now, but people in the church really know what they believe. I'm going to trust their belief. And I, I'm going to trust all of this knowledge that stands before me instead of any for any reason trying to carve my own way in the world. I, I very much believe the intentions of the people in the church and the long-standing tradition of the faith. And in, instead of letting that dissonance drive me away, I allowed myself to sit in it in a little bit and be like, I think I should believe these things. So let's give it time. Let's really work through these things. And that includes all of the really complicated things in the faith that usually drive people away, especially young people with difficult teachings. But I get it. I understand people's difficulties because uh, humans are sinful mm. and they distort things and they exploit people. Yeah. But what saves us on this point is that Jesus, when he ascended into heaven, didn't go away. Mm -hmm. He stays with us and continues to teach us yeah. through the official teaching of the Pope and the bishops. Not what they say in some goofy interview mm -hmm. somewhere, but in the official mm -hmm. teaching and through the canonized saints. Yeah. I'm not saying you, you trust everything blindly, but know what you should trust explicitly and completely. And don't let that distrust be so constant that you never put your faith in anything and never trust anyone. Well, but you know, in that instance, what we're doing is we're mm. putting our faith in ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than... <laughs> and I could at least acknowledge when I was like 13 that I was probably not the authority on most <laughs> things except being 13. <laughs> Which is wild, because I thought I was the authority on most things. You were a pretty good authority on music. <laughs> I don't know. I know what I listened to then, and I still listen to a lot of it. But other things I look back and I realize, <laughs> okay, that was that was really cringy. Maybe that wasn't music. Now I know what auto-tune sounds like. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We live and we learn. Well, your point, I'm so glad you you picked it out, the most important point. Because if we're humble then we can learn from God and, we, and mm. he will carry us the full distance. But if we're not humble, there's really not anything God can do with us. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. You know, the other thing I was thinking, I really enjoy these conversations that we can sit face to face and talk about these after the rosary because I really like your eyes. Oh, that's so sweet. That's the first time someone said that. It's true. Oh, I appreciate it. Are you saying that because they're your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> this is very clever. Only half my eyes. I will never forget, uh, there was a very iconic moment from Xavier's uh, high school experience where some girl like sat down at lunch and was like, you have the most beautiful eyes. And Xavier just looked her dead in her face and was like, my eyes are brown. <laughs> <laughs> so we quote that very, very often. Oh, that's... Uh, that's good. But I will say one one last point that, that you made on uh, humility and the ability to change. Because, yes, you cannot change someone who does not want to change. It is even harder to change someone who thinks that they've already changed. They think that they've already done all of the work. That they've already arrived. Uh-huh. Yeah. How about this? We never fully arrive. Yeah. We're always arriving and that's the great joy because mm -hmm. we're never going to get done and get bored mm -hmm. it's always going to be an adventure yeah, think about the greatest moment in your life uh, you never want that to end exactly and the beauty of relationships is when you are walking together when you're growing together when you're on the journey together that's really beautiful i'm glad that despite the fact i was worried that i'd really throw off the conversation because my head was in such a different place but this was a really enjoyable conversation Thanks be to God. Well, let's be apostles of friendship, good conversation, and the rosary. Share this with others. If you like this, join us on our app. You'll find the link below.